This is going to be a short little video where I talk about the fuses that are used in some of these meters. These two meters were provided by 5KY. This is the Fluke 107. If you'd watched the video where I damaged this meter at 15,000 volts, you know that this area of the circuit board actually sustained some damage. I'd cleaned it up the best I could. I resoldered the PTC down and I changed out the diodes that had been damaged. So this meter is 100% functional. This is 5KY's Radio Shack meter. And this meter again was also damaged. This meter has never been repaired. The way you see it is the way it was after I ran the last test on it. I didn't put it into the recycle bin because I thought we could learn a little bit more from it. If we look at the fuses themselves, you can see there's definitely a huge difference in the size of the fuses that are being used. These two being from the Radio Shack, the one on the left, the larger, this is the 10 amp fuse. And this would be like the 250 milliamp, 300 milliamp fuse. And with the Fluke, this is their 10 amp fuse. And you can see this is rated to break at 20 kA. This particular one is made by Busman. So when I run the tests on these meters, I never test the fuses. For one, you'd pop a fuse on every transient that you hit it with. So cost-wise and time-wise, you really don't want to be doing that. So let's have a look at the two circuit boards and how these are laid out. You can see this connector on the right. This is actually the current input on the Fluke 107. And if we follow this around, you can see it basically goes from the current input to the one side of the fuse. And the other side of the fuse has this heavy trace that runs back to our shunt and then into the ground. Across this, they have a diode. And that's basically in parallel with the shunt. And then there's a series resistor, it looks like. No, oh, it's an inductor. And that's what's actually going up into the measurement circuitry. So if this fuse were to fail, what's going to end up happening is the voltage across this guy probably cannot jump this gap. And if it tries to come across this way, they have a slit in the board to prevent it from breaking down. And if we look at the connectors, you can see these would actually protrude through the circuit board inside of these gapped areas here. And that should prevent it from arcing between these two pins. Now let's look at the Radio Shack meter. This was from the initial hit. You can see the two PTCs here were damaged. And then I later hit it with a higher transient. And it took out these diodes up in this area. I never did anything more with the meter. It just got put on the shelf. Well, what's interesting about this meter, first of all, it uses two fuses. One for the low current, one for the high current. Let's focus on the high current side. You can see the connectors got the plastic shroud over it. It goes through this junction here, which has these two large pins that go into the circuit board. And we can see those traces come off to this plane, which goes through the fuse, then across this shunt, and then back to the ground. Well, what's very interesting about this meter is this area right here. That's a spark gap. So they are intentionally creating a spark gap between the current sense input and the return ground. So you can imagine if this thing breaks down, basically the fuse doesn't even need to be here. So now the fuse becomes this circuit board trace. If you watch my video where I damage these fuses, these are actually filled with sand and it'll quench the arc. That's very important. We want to get that arc suppressed as soon as possible. This is a... Uh, 5 amp glass fuse has a UL listing on it. We'll just install these into a couple of clips. This is from Asia Fuse. This is a 10 amp ceramic fuse. So 
So I guess that's why you want to use ceramic fuses inside your multimeter. On a spark gap like this, that's not going to happen. This is going to continue to erode, and there's nothing that's going to break that arc. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to hook these two meters up to the transient generator. We're not going to have the fuse installed, and we're going to see if anything happens. So why run this test? Well, there's a lot of talk on the internet about the type of fuses used. And when people will do reviews of these meters, they'll look at the fuse and they'll make the determination if a meter is safe or not, depending on what that fuse is. But when you look at some of these meters and the clearances between the actual current input and some of the other pins, like in this case with the spark gap, you got to believe that once that fuse is out of the circuit, it can't do its job anymore, and it's up to the meter to provide the final protection. And some of these meters that I've looked at, I can tell you that those clearances are way too tight, and without actually running the test, you're not going to know what's really going to happen. So it's not just the fuse, it's the layout. So we're going to start with the fluke. This will be a 5,000 volt transient without the half cycle line simulator enabled. I'm not expecting to see any sort of a breakdown. And it looks like nothing happened. So we'll try it a second time here. Okay. Doesn't look like anything happened. I'm not too surprised. Unfortunately, with the Radio Shack, the area that we know is going to break down is going to be this spark gap. So I'd love to have this thing sitting inside of the case when I run this, but unfortunately we won't be able to see anything going on. So I think what we're going to do is just uh, run it outside of the case, unfortunately. But again, this should be the area that actually breaks down. Alright, so again this will be a 5,000 volt transient without the half cycle line simulator. And I'm hoping we see a breakdown at that spark gap. Wow, ah, so it looks like it's actually breaking down in this area up in here. Let's uh, flip the board around. Wow. Yeah, so it looks like all the breakdown is up in this area here. It's not even down at that spark gap. I think what I'm going to do is put it back inside of the case. And put the screws back in it and let's uh, try running it again. Okay, you can see I've reinstalled the circuit board into the case. All the screws are back in. And again, I have the transient generator attached to the current inputs. I'm assuming that the meter is still going to break down in the same location. And this will be without the half cycle line simulator. I had to redo my high voltage probe here a little bit. Also made an end piece for it. A reminder, you want to keep your hand away from the end of this thing. Like I need a reminder. <laughs> Alright. Okay, next I'm going to apply a single transient using the half cycle line simulator. Again, I would have thought that it would have broke down at the spark gap. But apparently in this vicinity we have something else that's breaking down. Hopefully what we're going to see happen is this area is basically going to evaporate 
and then maybe we can get down to where that spark gap actually will come into play. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and enable the generator. Let's just see what happens here. And this will be a 5,000 volt transient. And once that kicks, we're going to follow that up with about 400 joules of energy. This transient generator is live right now, uh, so yeah, I'm not getting anywhere near it, but uh, you can see it basically blew the back off of the chip. Did a fair amount of damage, it looks like, down in this area here, but once that gave way, this area here just lit right up, and you can see some of the effects from that. Yeah, so now that we've kind of blown this area open, I think what I'm going to do is apply a second cycle here. Hopefully now the full amount of energy will dissipate down in this area. Let's just see what happens. So again this will be a 5000 volt initial hit. And that will be followed up with an energy pulse of about 400 joules. This is really where this uh, bar comes in here. Allow me to short out the output of that generator. Okay. So I think what I'm going to do, we'll go ahead and take this thing back apart and let's have a look underneath it. Okay. So I've gone ahead and removed the screws. And we can see a little bit of splatter on the switch up here. Just kind of see those specks. That looks like we vaporized a trace. I hadn't noticed before but on the front side of the board right there was another spark gap and that's actually what broke down so the one in the back side right here is still intact see no damage really to the back side that's all from the spark gap on the front side here So it's hard to say what would happen if this were actually induced with a real transient. Obviously the fluke isn't going to have any issues with this because it doesn't break down in the first place. So again my thought with making this video is to hopefully explain that it isn't just about the types of fuses that are being used in these meters. It's partially about the layout. Would this meter be unsafe if it were actually subjected to the IEC standard? I really have no idea. But the fact that it actually cut loose like this without a fuse in there lets you know that the fuse really doesn't even come into play. Once this fuse were to open up, the arc is just going to continue across the circuit board. What happens after that, yeah, your guess is as good as mine. Again, I'd like to thank Technology Catalyst for providing these meters. Hopefully you learned something from this video or found it entertaining. Till the next meter. Later.